Artists. Artists come in all shapes and sizes. One thing they have in common is they brighten up our world in their own way. The artist who designed this mural is Stephen Bennett. Beaverdam is lucky in that he has a thing for old churches. Uh, in 2018, the Beaverdam Area Community Theater moved into this building, their new home. After moving, our old home sat empty, a building that BDACT called home for 35 years. BDACT was lucky that the old empty Baptist church piqued the interest of a world-renowned portrait artist. This artist has worked in countries throughout the world painting portraits of the vast and diverse human population. He purchased BDACT's old home with the goal of opening an art studio. Stephen Bennett wanted to meet people and become a member of this community. Let me tell a story. Now believe me, Stephen is a better storyteller than me, but my short story is, in 2019, Stephen did a mural for the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. This was no ordinary painting project. The prince wanted it done in a specific way, painted by, tile by tile out in the desert over a period of weeks. Stephen and his mural painting entourage spent weeks traveling by camel, setting up tents, and painting tiles. The end product was a 30 foot by 30 foot mosaic mural of the prince, now hanging in some princely location. This was the second mural that Stephen did. His first was inspired while working with school children. It was in Indonesia, and Stephen wanted to create an art project with all the kids. He came up with the mosaic mural idea. His first mural subject was Robin Lim, founder of the Healthy Mother Earth Foundation. Robin Lim was well known in that she won the 2011 CNN News Hero of the Year Award. Stephen and the kids did an eight foot by eight foot mosaic mural of her. Both the princess and Robin Lim's murals were hung indoors. Uh, Stephen was introduced to Mayor Gluen and the Beaverdam Chamber Executive Director Tracy Prost. They were planning an arts festival and Stephen was a good person to get involved. Stephen was happy to do so and suggested a mosaic mural. Little did he know what that suggestion would lead to. Uh, Tracy and the mayor were very busy organizing the inaugural Arts and Peony Festival last year. I was a new downtown Beaverdam Inc. board member and at our monthly meetings Tracy would talk about the mural being one of the many events. I said that this sounded like a fun little project and offered to head it up. First item was determining where to hang it. When I was the BDACT board president and project manager for this new theater building, I always thought the wall, and I said this wall, but the one outside where the mural is hanging, would be a perfect location for a mural. My idea was to fill the whole wall. When Steven suggested a mural, I believe he was thinking one about eight foot by eight foot and an indoor one. My idea was 12 foot by 12 foot, but not just one 12 by 12, but four. Uh, when we first started the project, we didn't know how we were going to build it or what materials we were going to use. Um, with a little persuasion, Stephen readily agreed to the project. After getting BDACT approval to hang the mural on their wall, we formed a committee. The next issue was who were going to be the mural subjects. We tossed about the idea of past city leaders, city founders, influential BDAC members, and after much discussion, we settled on local artists. We are blessed to have such accomplished artists from Beaverdam. We chose Lower, Lois Ayler, children's book author and illustrator, Nancy Zeman, fiber artist and national sewing educator, and two men to join the women on the wall, Fred McMurray, actor, and Eric Kelkers, Broadway actor. We could not have come up with a better group to honor, don't you agree? After raising money and purchasing materials, we mounted the panels in a 12 foot by 12 foot on Stephen's studio wall. Stephen then drew the mural subject on the sheets of B-Bond. This project was kind of like paint by numbers, but the numbers didn't represent colors, they represented shades. The paint we bought, which is the same paint Disney uses for outdoor projects, was pure pigment. Stephen mixed the paint to create the eight shades of each color. Number one being a very light color, like a pale baby blue, and number eight being a very deep, dark navy blue. So on and so forth for all the colors you see except for black and white. When drying on the sheets, Stephen indicated which shade the painter needed to use with a number. If you look at the mural, all the background tiles that didn't have any Nancy Lois on them were number five. This indicated the number five shade on the entire tile. The painter could then paint whatever he or she wanted on that tile using any of the eight colors in the number five shade. The tiles were the subject drawn on the painter, the, the tiles with the subject drawn on, the painter needed to stay within the lines with the indicated shade. 
They could still use whatever color they wanted within that shade group. You can see the many different designs they created. At the Arts Festival painting event this past June, we had over 200 local community artists that painted 288 tiles. The youngest artist was four months old, and the oldest was 96 years. The neat thing is that many put their names on the tiles that they painted. We got not just one mural done that day, but two, Lois and Nancy. Eric Kalkhurst will be painted at the Arts and Peony Festival in 2022, and Fred McMurray in 2023. One of the things I like most about this mural is community, organized and assembled by community volunteers, painted by the community, community artist subject, and funded by the community. It is 144 individual one-foot square paintings that create the whole. 